It's, it was like it's too easy to do. What are we talking about? Yeah. Snorting coke? What? It, it's legal pharmaceutical grade amphetamine. And they make it, they put sugar in it so kids want to take it. Chemistry 101 with Professor Corman. <laughs> yeah, you, you want to learn some shit about chemistry and drugs, just ask me anything. Alright, let's learn, let's learn about chemistry and drugs, Corman. What's the best thing you put up your nose? Ketamine. I've always wanted to do ketamine. Why ketamine? ketamine. Is it smooth or... Ketamine is... Okay, there's two types of ketamine. There, there's there's uh, R- minus and S+. Plus. One's animal grade, the other one's human grade. When people mix that up, they get sick and they puke and they get dizzy and they go, oh, ketamine's horrible. But you did the wrong kind. So the pharmaceutical grade is, is S+. Plus. When they in other subscribe, words, just keep doing drugs. Until they you get prescribe the right it to children. No, you just got to do your fucking <laughs> research and ask around. When they prescribe it to children, uh, when they come into the ER, because it's so non, uh, it doesn't affect your respiratory system or your heart. So when when kids come into the ER and they're freaking out, they give them ketamine. Uh, so basically, K is like being As, totally. Did anyone else just hear that? Did you just do a bump? Yeah. No, I oh, yeah. did not. I just okay. snorted because I. Oh, shut up. His nose is destroyed, so he has to like constantly sniff. I'm... No, I'm. <laughs> no, I'm drinking. I'm drinking fucking bourbon. I'm not doing lines. No, okay. Oh. Ketam ketamine is like being totally wasted without being ill or sick or dizzy or nauseous. It's it's called high stepping through the low grass. If Ooh. You can get that image in your head, because it's like that's what you do. It's like, so it's like, if you do too much ketamine, there's something, a phenomenon called the K-hole. And which, if you've ever heard that, it's not very fun, but it's survivable. I mean, you know, so, but like I said, because K is very safe. Um, I've done enough of it to know that. I've, I've been into a, a, a lot of K-holes and have come back. Yeah, I've, you've been into a lot of holes, I'm sure. I, that too, metaphorically and literally, yes. <clears throat> But um, no, K so is what's it comparable to? Is it, is it acid? Is it comparable to no, acid? No, it it's not. It's not a psychedelic, like in that sense. It's very, um, well, like I said, it's like being really, really, really drunk, like where where you're spinning and you're 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 distorted and reality is kind of. It's almost like PCP, but except without. All of the super distortions you get with PCP. PCP sucks, by the way. It's I don't, I don't recommend ever doing that. It's just it's, it's a trash drug. It's um, you you feel well. It's an anal it's an analgesic is the clinical term. Analgesic. Analgesic, which means it's uh, uh like anesthesia. If you do enough of it, you can actually it's like a surgery mode where your like body is paralyzed and you feel no pain, you feel nothing, but you're still conscious. Which can also, you know, turn into a nightmare scenario if you're not, you know, careful. But it's, I really can't compare it to anything else. It's its own entity in itself. It's hard to explain unless you've ever done it. Is that's why I, that's the, the first thing that came to mind. It says, what's the best thing you ever put up your nose? And I say, K, because it was so different. Um, you can watch people on Drugs Lab do ketamine in that video. I've seen that video. That's what made me want to do ketamine. What was the smoothest thing you said? Right. Is that the same thing as Special K? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Uh, the smoothest thing I've ever done? Um, yeah. Like, as far as not, like, pain or, or the, just the not other MDMA. experience? <laughs> not MDMA. Not MDMA. Good okay. coke doesn't really hurt because it numbs your fucking face. Right. And then you just... Nummy. The smoothest thing was, uh, I am, oh, I mean, any pharmaceutical you crush up and snort, I mean, doesn't burn because it's not a, it's, it's not a, uh, like Xanax, not acid. those don't hurt. Right. They don't hurt because no, they're I not mean, a uh, caloric acid. Ugh. What made you start doing massive amounts of drugs, Corman? Um, I wanted to explore consciousness and like, and like what human awareness actually was and was all about so i wanted to force it into modalities that weren't natural so i could observe it from those perspectives dmt for sure i think DMT oh. is the experience you get. couldn't you just okay. do that with by putting a paper bag in your head in a dark room 
<laughs> well, that's Negative. sensory deprivation, and that's yeah. not the same as entheogenesis. It's close to Right. It's exactly. It's like it's like people that say like, oh, meditation can it can achieve the same results. No, we're, we're 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 you're comparing apples and oranges. We're talking about entheogenesis, which is a a chemically in, inducted state of conscientiousness that you can't achieve by depriving yourself of a oxygen or b light. Or just sitting on your in yoga position with your eyes closed for hours and hours and hours. You, you you can't achieve those states the same. But DMT, now that you bring that up, that is a very interesting compound. And I've done tons of DMT before. I've smoked it. I've snorted it. I've eaten it. Never did ayahuasca before, uh, because ayahuasca no. is produced by those Indian is people. That like South. American yes, hallucinogenic yeah, yeah. shit. Kind of like yeah. peyote. It sounds a lot like peyote. Yeah, uh, yeah but I thought like, people be like throwing up whenever you're doing that shit. Yeah, yeah you yeah. do. You do get sick. It's like, well, peyote as well. Peyote, um, you have a, a a nausea sensation and you puke, but once you puke, you feel better and then, you, then the actual trip starts. But uh, DMT uh, or ayahuasca is prepared by the Amazonian Indians, and you have to know a tribe and a in a a community in which does that, and you got to sign up for it, and then you got to like be inducted into their you know group, and then they got to trust you. But it's basically like they take uh, pergamon harmala and uh, dimethyltryptamine uh, containing roots that it's a special vine that grows in the uh, rainforest and then you put it with a maoi a, a maoi inhibitor which produce which keeps your liver from breaking down the molecule uh M maois are very prevalent in modern pharmaceuticals which is why they're dangerous so and so forth. right <clears throat> because if you don't do that it your body will metabolize it almost instantaneously and the trip won't last as long. So that's why when you smoke d pure dimethyltryptamine uh, crystal base, when you freebase it, the trip is only about uh, two and a half minutes long, which is why they call it the businessman's acid trip. Because you can basically literally go and take a lunch break, smoke DMT, have like a comparable experience of taking like a quarter ounce of mushrooms and then you're down and back into baseline within five minutes, and you can go about with the rest of your day. Because dimethyltryptamine is naturally produced in all mammals in your brain. It's a naturally occurring thing. When you dream and you have REM sleep, your brain is producing massive amounts of dimethyltryptamine. The measure of how toxic or not toxic or natural a drug is, is how fast your body is able to metabolize it. That's an example of that. So with something like LSD, which is a, which is a synthetic psychedelic, your body doesn't know what to fucking do with that. That's why it's like 15, 20 hours long because your metabolism is trying to take that molecule and put it here and put it over here and it can't because it's, it just doesn't know what to do with it. It's just huge complex molecule that's, that's just, it's, you know, it, it doesn't go there, it doesn't go there. But dimethyltryptamine is natural, it's, it's, it's produced in fish, uh, plants, roots, grass, barks of yep. trees, uh, grass. So it's, it's just in and out like that. But it is like mushrooms because it is uh, – mushrooms is 4-phosphoroxydimethyltryptamine. So it's the phosphorus version of the NN dimethyltryptamine, which is nitrogen, nitrogen. So it's the nitrogen-based dimethyltryptamine. So what mushrooms is – which is interesting too because I used to grow mushrooms. I used, I used to uh, produce them myself uh, in my laboratory. I built a laboratory. When you want to talk about fucking – being a nerd, I built a laboratory in my house for growing mushrooms, and I did. And I got the spores, and I had petri dishes, and I had a, a, a glove box, and I had incubators, and I had all these this light system, and I produced my own. And then um, that uh, that was very interesting because then I, when you grow your own, you know exactly what you're getting, and you don't have to worry about there being impurities or you know it being you know weak tea. You can grow and beef them up yourself and make them supercharged. <laughs> uh, 
Um, later. Bye, Ray Ray. Disconnected from your channel. But I would I would get a probably maybe four gram four to five to six grams of mushrooms that I grew myself, dry them, put them in a coffee grinder, uh, pulverize them until they're dust, put them in a big bowl of hot mint tea, and then just slurp it all down. And within That's so minutes, extra. It's so extra. Just smoke pot like a normal person, Corman. Come on. Well, oh, oh, come on. I've done that. <laughs> but uh, it gets boring after so long. Well, well here, experience. here's the thing. I I wouldn't do mushrooms without pot. Like it's almost you, you, I can't have one without the other, because when I'm coming on to the mushroom, like like when I like I just said, do it with the tea and the hot liquid, because your your stomach doesn't have to digest the actual shroom like the flesh you, when you blend it up and put it in the hot water it's it instantaneously draws out all the active compounds and it hits you like a fucking truck so you start to sweat and you like you, you're just like oh my god what's happening so you start smoking weed and at that point it kind of pulls it back down to earth and it makes it manageable because otherwise you'll just you know fucking lose it so one complements the other but another thing about weed is that it goes with everything you can do it with anything and it makes whatever you're doing better which is something notable about cannabis is you can just you can you smoke it when you're drinking, you can smoke it when you're on acid, you can smoke it when you're on ketamine. It will never affect it in a negative way. And in fact, it will improve the experience, which is something. So marijuana can't... is a gateway drug, boys. You heard it here first. <laughs> same thing, with, believe it or not, is actually orange juice. I actually increased a lot of uh, hallucinogenics. Actually, yes. There's something about the vitamin, yep. vitamin D C. and C. Yeah, C yes, and yes. D that's fucking increasing the hallucinogenics. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you can take a normal acid trip that would last how long? Like 13 hours? Right. And, and you can increase it by from 13 to like 15 to 16 hours just by increasing, like just taking massive amounts of orange juice. Right. Which is Same what you from can... The too. Yes, which is also what you can do. Well, uh, what I would do when I would go, because I used to work, I used to be a DJ at a club, and it, we, we'd open at uh, midnight, and we wouldn't close until 8 o'clock the next morning. What I would do is I would pop a pill of Molly and I would just drink Jägermeister for the rest of the night because alcohol p makes the MDMA experience last longer and longer and longer. Because I didn't want to sit oh, there and just keep yeah. popping pills because that just makes you all twacked out and bleh, you get all fucking sweaty Depressed and weird. As fucking right. Nasty. Suicide Mondays come around and you're in the corner, you know, cutting your wrists. But if you just take one pill and you just drink hard liquor, and sip on it, you know, don't just pound it, you just, you can make it plateau for longer and longer and longer, so that's what I would do. The Jaeger on the rocks, and I would just, I would get that for free every time I went in there, I'm just like, you know, they would know my drink, just, Jaeger on the rocks, yep, okay, pop my pill. Another thing, another, other th compounds I was interested in for a while before they became completely illegal, which was non- illegal gray market psychedelic drugs that were at one point available on the internet and you could order them and they would come straight to your doorstep and that's why i say it's a gray market but they've since cracked down on those and they've become very much illegal um, but there was a golden age where people could do this but once the cat was out of the bag it was quickly shut down um, it was showed for sure um, and these were compounds like uh, they were analogs of 2CB. If anybody knows what 2CB is, that was the most popular version of the phenethylamine uh, side of hallucinogenics. Now, phenethylamines are basically mescaline and peyote. Like, you have two types of major yep. uh, psychedelics. You have tryptamines and you have phenethylamines. Those are your psychedelics. Phenethylamines analogs were in, created and uh, expanded upon by a doctor, a psychochemist named Alexander Shulgin back in the 80s and uh, do 70s. Don't ask. Alexander Shulgin produced uh, two books called PCOL and TCOL, which are an acronyms meaning tryptamines I have known and loved and phenethylamines I have known and loved. And which basically they're cookbooks. You can go in there and you can look his look at his recipes and you can recreate his his uh, synthesis if you have a you know third year 
bio, uh, organic chemistry set and you have the knowledge to do so. Um, so you have uh, compounds like 2CB, 2CI, 2CC, 2CT2, 2CT221, and all of those I have done personally, and they're all different. And they're all, they all have their own personality and they all have their own specific effect. Uh, 2CI was my favorite because 2CI was not too long. It only lasted about five hours. Um, and that was the most painful thing to do up your nose. That and 2CT2. Two, like even if you did like a microscopic little fleck of it, like the, the like the tip of a ballpoint pin. That was actually actually the dose. That it, it would, that that was something that we didn't really like give normies, because you had to really know the dose range because you could OD on it really easily. So we didn't give that to normal people. So that was like an in group thing. Like you just barely take this tiny little fleck and you sniff it, and oh my god, dude, you get a nosebleed. Your nose would physically start what? bleeding. That's how bad it hurt. So Ooh, was it because it was so dense or something? How no, it, because it was so caustic. Gotcha. Uh, yeah, it was. It was a true um, chloritic acid, and it did burn. Like it, it melted your fucking sino, like sinuses, like your sinus cavity. It melted your flesh. It was you no know, acid, and all these chemicals are, are acid based. <laughs> Snorting them was extremely painful. The best thing to do was to, just to eat them. So I, I would just make I would get powdered sugar and just mathematically, uh, you know, calculate the ratio. But like, like I want this, I want 10 milligrams per pill. So I just do 10 milligrams and I do the rest of it to powdered sugar. And you just put it in the little gel cap and you eat it or you can put it in juice. So you just tap it into your orange juice your, or your water or whatever. I, you know, you, you just at a, at a party, you'd have a water bottle. And you could just pour it into your water bottle, shake it up, and just sip on it for the rest of the night, and just you know dance like a fucking you know bellin all night. <laughs> uh, another, and so all of these, as a side note, were considered to be bath salts. This is where the term bath salts comes from, because um, when the company was shipping these uh, materials, they would label them as bath salts to get around the legal loophole of exactly what the fuck they were. So that's why people started calling them bath salts. So bath salts, the term could mean any one of these alphabet soup names I just mentioned. Another one was uh, uh, five, five MMC or meow meow as it's known on the streets of London, or um, it was an analog to MDMA. What it was the fuck like is happening? <laughs> Where am I? I totally understand everything that he's saying. But let me look at this. Just, just keep my let's, let's backtrack. Let's, let's backtrack a little bit. So the movie Limitless. Do you think yes. that is plausible? Um. Yes. I'm lost. Um. Can we go back to what's Limitless? Limitless. It's a, a movie about a pill, right? This pill gives you a limitless ability to learn and create and all kinds of shit. Completely um, opens up your senses. I think it's a little exaggerated, but we already have things that do that, which is like the entire time I was watching that, I'm like, they're they're basically just making an advertisement for smart drugs and like, you know, LSD and shit like that. Because, I mean, it wasn't exactly like that, but it, it's 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 almost possible, I think. Do, do you think it'd be like an after baby, like Adderall and DMT? And yes, all those compounds yes. mixed together is right. essentially what it is. <laughs> right. Well, it's because whatever, I mean, I'm sorry, but amphetamine is a smart drug. I mean, yes. but at, at certain doses, yes. At, at high, unregulated doses, yes, it turns you into a monster and you fucking, you know, you cut your dick off and you go and you rape people. But uh, at, 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 the, at the threshold effective dose, amphetamine and all of its sisters and cousins is a smart drug. And so is nicotine to a lesser extent. I mean, like, and it's, it's like... Um, yeah, but, um, yeah, uh, 5MMC was a big thing a couple of years ago, like maybe like 10, 10 years ago or more, because like I said, it was a gray market drug. You could purchase it on the internet. You could buy it legally. And so it was fucking everywhere. It was in the underground club scene in all major cities. 
People were doing it all over the place. There's YouTube videos about it. Um, I got into some serious trouble with it because where I was, I got accused of selling it and some dealer thought I was selling it to one of his customers. So he was threatening me and we got in this big fight. So it's, yeah, it was, it wasn't pretty, but later on he found out it wasn't me. It was that Ajna fucking faggot. And he was ordering it from India. And I'm like, I don't know Ajna. He gets it from fucking Marrakesh or wherever that fucking country is. I don't, do that shit. And he's just like, no, you're lying. I know it's you. And I'm just like, yeah, you're, you're tweaked out. You look like you just crawled out of a ditch. Like, get the fuck away from me. But that, yeah, that stuff will tear you up. Like, there's some of those research chemicals that are not good. Like, they're very addictive. Um, Form MC and, and, and the uh, other one. Form, uh, phenethylmethcathinone is, is, oh, what, is, I've heard is, is, yeah. yeah, methcathinone is, that's, that's the, like the, the bath salt bath salt and people were doing that in droves yeah. at one point and that's what was fucking people up very addictive uh my friend got addicted to it my friend christian uh there wasn't a day that went by where he couldn't do it and i stopped doing it because i saw that it wasn't it, it just it was a bad thing it was dark and like he he went off the deep end with it and so i just i lost contact with him and like a year later he came back and he's like okay i stopped I stopped doing it, man. I'm just like, okay, you you back now? All right, good. No, it's it's bad. Um, where? What year is it? I feel like the conversation just lasted ten years. <laughs> what the okay, well, that was fuck? Doing drugs. That was your answer to okay, Corman. Let's talk about psychochemistry. That's so, would you, I don't. Is there anything else you want to ask me? No. I think we're good, <laughs> Professor. Never again. Okay, we'll uh, meet back here next week. You have no homework. Uh, class dismissed. <laughs> I enjoyed it. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Clap, clap. I can't clap. How do you... What do you mean you can't clap? Like, Hold on. A lot of clap, clap, clap. Trippy drugs How and stuff clap like that. How do you one hand, you know? I can't use two hands, and I'm doing it right now. Tree falls in the woods. I have voice activation. I don't know. I'm gonna go to bed now. Boardman, no! <laughs> but I, like, I have I to eat work all day tomorrow. <laughs> oh, did you pick up the like the late Friday shifts, Boardman? Yeah. Yeah. What are you working tomorrow? Are you bartending or working the books? Bartending in the morning, and then in the evening I'm in cocktail. I don't know what that means. I'm a cocktail waitress. Oh. Do you get to wear, like, a cocktail skirt? I wear pants. Oh. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Minute, I'll miss you. I'll miss you, and I'll miss Friday Night Fights. Today's not Friday. Not Friday yet. But tomorrow. Yeah. I'll but... be working all day. Yeah, but we're not going to do Friday Night Fights until, like, 10 p.m. probably. Like Might get off at 10 p.m. Now she works at a BJ's. BJ's brew house? That's yeah. 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 Kelly loves that shit. It's a great place. Never been there, but I've heard of it. I've always wanted to go. I'm mean, the bomb. What is those? Right, we'll surprise Ward when it works. Do you oh, get a so BJ cute. if you go there? Yeah, only if you get in the shower with them. Oh, no. <laughs> you're going to get a drug dude. <laughs> Hey, I have a big shower and a bunch of powder. Come party with me. <laughs> I have a big shower and a bunch of powder. <laughs> that sounds like somebody's catchphrase. Can't go open the door. I got a big shower and a lot of powder. Let's party. <laughs> like Duke Nukem. Okay, he, he goodbye. Can I board friend? Princess board that disconnected from your channel. Well, what the fuck was that compound I was looking at yesterday? God damn it! What the cathinone? Catheter? No, no, it's an actual real tree serum. A sodium something. Foreman, how many sodium catheters pentothal. have you had in your life? Yep, that's it. Sodium pentothal. Let me know if you ever find like a compound that knock people out in like a second. Chloroform? Uh, airborne. Chloroform? No, airborne. Oh. Chloroform? 
Is there such thing as airborne? Can you make chloroform airborne? I know the Russians tried some crazy shit once where a bunch of people were held hostage. They released that shit and then... Chloroform can well, be a fucking a dry substitute. It doesn't have to be liquid. The American military in the 60s experimented on soldiers with LSD. Yep. Yeah, they did. They thought that it was going to be like they could just like crop dust the enemy and they would go crazy. And uh, but it it didn't work out too well. It, like people started like they started climbing trees and laughing uncontrollably and like they started like like all peace and love. And they so didn't, like shoot people anymore. And, it would work then if you drop it on an enemy location. Um. It can either go you probably one or two have ways. to deal with go people going into a psychotic or... state, I would imagine. Yeah. yeah, but if you're in war and you're dropping and you're dropping chemical bombs on somebody, I think you're already past that point. Right. Yeah, but psychotic people are very dangerous. Mm -hmm. you know, I just you hit them with the AK. On someone who's fucking schizophrenic, good luck. <laughs> yeah. No, they, they, they have a gun. Right. It wasn't, yeah, it didn't, it didn't work to their one of the... desired effect. One of the best government experiences I ever heard was when they tried to teach that dolphin dolphin how to speak English. So they had that uh, half sunken house where a woman and a dolphin lived together, and they did LSD together. And like the the dolphin was a male and wanted to fuck the female, and they're like, "Okay, dolphins you need rapey. yeah." They're like, "Okay, you need to start giving that dolphin hand jobs." So this woman and this dolphin were. Doing LSD and getting jerked off. Uh, it was yeah. really weird. Sounds like Puna. Sounds like fucking down the street from where I live. Bunch of dolphin Sounds hippie like sex cult. Sounds like Nazi shit. Cap Ruth work time out. That's straight Nazi experience. Fucking Chechnyans. That's what I want to fucking know. I want to get fucking, fucking Russians, though. classified Nazi fucking experiment. That'd be awesome. <laughs> God, I would love to see some of that shit. 130 hostages died. <laughs> At least 170. Because they released a fucking nerve agent or something that was supposed to knock out people instantly. That didn't work. You know, you know the Spetsnaz motto, you know. 50 hostages, uh, 50 terrorists, 100 body bags, mission accomplished, job well done. My biggest pet peeve with, like, cinema is sleeping gas. It's like, no, no, it doesn't work like that. Yeah, it doesn't quite work like that. It's You can put somebody in a psychotic state, but you can't, like, knock them out. I mean, uh, aerosolized LSD will just make people giddy and want to burn fuck. incense and fuck. Right, it's yeah. just, right. And uh, unfortunately, I have not done enough actual quality LSD in my life to actually be appreciative of that compound. I did probably real acid once. Everything else was Dude. a crude approximation cooked up in some fucking hippie's bathtub somewhere that I wish I could find so I could... We used to get this shit. That's all we were able to get. We couldn't get weed. We could get acid. Just straight LSD the fuck? in a vial. That's all you could get. Yeah, well, wow. like back in the day, that's all you could get, dude. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, orange sunshine and and that all that oh, uh, purple yeah. Osley stuff. Well, well, Osley was was a CIA. He was working for the CIA because one hundred percent of the LSD that was imported or created in America during the sixties was government made, because it had to be controlled because it was an artificially synthetic compound that was created by Albert Hoffman. Albert Hoffman was a Swiss chemist that invented it. Now, the CIA went to, to Hoffman and went, you know, give us your recipe. He's like, no. He's like, okay, well, we're just going to synthesize it then. He's like, well, yeah, good luck. Well, well, they ended up synthesizing it very, very close, but it wasn't the real thing. I mean, there's some, some of the real things out there, but it was just all CIA military grade LSD, which wasn't bad by itself, but it still wasn't like his specific recipe and LSD is very very difficult to create I mean you really I mean you have to have like a professional like university laboratory and you have to have years and years of experience you got to have that centrifuge you got to have like you know hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of, of equipment to make actual LSD it's not something you can Roman, that image links for you by the way <laughs> 
this right here. This will probably be my last hit before my body gives out. Don't make the same mistakes I did. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I know those things. In the wake of the siege in Texas, 93, Attorney General Janet Reno asked her law enforcement advisors to knock out gas and be surrender the they were like, pretty much like, no, you dumb bitch, that does not exist. <laughs> it's like, no. By the way, that's uh, that's Hollywood. Yeah, yeah. that's fiction. <laughs> that's Batman tier. It's it's not it's not real. Oh. Um. Yeah, I think I think actual the real acid I did was on a, on it, it was paper. It wasn't liquid because I've had plenty of fake liquid before, but I had it on paper and it was like, it was the painting of, I don't know if you know the artist, the psychedelic artist, Alex Gray. Um, I've met him personally, by the way, but he, he's the one that does all the tools. Oh, name drop much. Yeah, I know I had to, um, but he's the one that does the tool album covers. Um, but it was of his portrait of Albert Hoffman and it was like the, the corner of the upper right hand portion of that had all like the intelligentsia that had like Terrence McKenna and all those people but I, I did one tab and that it, that was on a different level of everything else I've ever done so that's how I knew it was different and that was the time I was with my Jewish girlfriend and she was freaking out on me and wanting to break up with me and I was flying on acid and I'm just like oh my god bitch I can't handle you right now I'm at my friend's birthday party right now and I want to do acid and you're really kind of bringing me down so why don't you just fuck off I don't know yeah it was it was good and bad but it was it was beautiful I'll, I'll say that much it was fucking gorgeous but everything after that was just what amazing. the jewish girlfriend was gorgeous no the oh. acid experience oh. my, was, my was jewish, it not haram no it wasn't it was fuck her um worst worst relationship ever by the way um don't j don't date jews um <laughs> But the uh, the the other times were just like um, what was it? D O I and D O M were two amphetamine based Cap root like work times out LSD equivalents. They were they were basically knockoff drugs. They were basically like uh, analogs. And and there's actually you could look this up online. There was there was there's uh, actual news articles referencing like an epidemic on the streets of major American cities and European cities where this fake LSD was going around in circulation. I'm just like, I was doing that before it was cool. Wow, I was doing fake acid before the news even knew about it. But it's horrible, horrible, horrible shit. I remember I did it at, uh, what was it? A, um, Global Dance, which was a, 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 you know, psychedelic fucking rave techno well, dance. That. I remember the news talking about that shit. Yeah, no, it was like uh, 2012 or, or, or 2010, I think. Yeah. Yeah, but I went to Global Dance, which, which was this touring, like I said, like uh, EDM scene that would go around in, in different cities of the world. Well, it went to where I was, it was Honolulu, and I went to it, and um, my friend busted out a vial of liquid. I was already on Molly and God knows what else. I forget. And he's like, hey, you want to do some acid? I'm like, uh, is it real? And my friend's like, yeah, sure. We'll do it. Yeah. I'm just like, uh, is it, I don't know, dude, is it pure? And he's like, no, it's pure. It's pure. I'm just like, okay, whatever. He puts like two drops on my tongue and that was it. That was it. For the next like 24 hours, I was bucked. Like it just, it came on slow and it creeped in, and it was dark, and it was sinister, and I was just like, oh my god, dude, what is this shit? And it was, everything became distorted, and reality just fell to pieces on me. Like, I remember See, walking... doesn't even sound cool to me. It, it's not cool. I'm not, I'm not advocating it at all. It, it's, it's, it's horrible, horrible stuff, but because it's, it's an amphetamine psychedelic. It's so, DOI. It's DOI quick, and DOM. Quick segue... Is it possible to make an airborne uh, anesthetic? Um, well, anything can be aerosolized uh, that's transdermal or... I mean, if, if it is transdermal, There's no it can be aerosolized. Some of it's just more effective than others. 
Right, exactly. Um, as long as the molecule can get through the skin layer, the, ep the epidermal layer, you can ep you can aerosolize anything. But some molecules so are too big, in and they can't have a, a sleeping gas. It would just take a very long time to take effect. They would take a uh, shit ton of it too. You, right, you'd have to actually soak somebody with it, like actually get them very wet, them physically wet. I don't know if it like a actual like gas, like a mist, would it would be able to induce an effect that would be to that level. Um, I mean, we were thinking about putting acid in the fog machine at the club. <laughs> But, you know that would <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> that that might have that might incur a lot. Yeah, that was that was always a fucking thing. <laughs> You're not the first ones to do it. Trust me. Right. No, the fog machine Back in has the old always school been raised a vector. In the 90s, they did that shit all the time. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Um. But yeah, no. Um. It's funny because in the, in fog machines they use a chemical that's called propylene glycol. It's kind of the same as shit that's in your vapes. Vape. People who vape. Yes. Yeah. Yes. It's the same shit. So it's a great carrier for LSD. It's a great it is. Carrier. It's the same thing they make tattoo ink with. It's yep. the same thing. We, yeah. I have a tattoo friend who told me that. I'm like, that's what I make my vape juice with: propylene glycol and vegetable glycerin. Yep. Um. What? <laughs> um. But. Uh, it's yeah, pretty great. I don't use the vape juice. I just mix it with THC and propylene glycol. No, oh, really? Yeah. Uh, you don't use nicotine? Nope. Huh. I was wondering what that <coughs> does. Does that clog up your 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 coil after a while? Because THC is kind of gummy. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. That would, that would stink. Yeah, it's not an all day thing, but. Right. 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 It's a little bit better than just smoking. Right. 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 Um. But THC, when you eat it, now, THC is an interesting drug. It's an interesting Fuck chemical. Yeah. It's when you smoke it, it's like, that's that's just a walk in the park. That's like anyone can do that. You smoke pot, whatever, that's fine. That's But if you eat it, I don't like then it, it. it can be as powerful as any LSD trip. Uh, it's it, like, it comes from the inside out. I don't yeah. like, yeah, mm. I don't, I'm not an ingester. No, I, me either. The last time I ate pot was when my fucking friend who was just starting to, like, make pot food, he didn't know what he was doing. He, he comes, shows up at my house after work, and he's like, I, I have this brownie. Try it. Let me know what you think. I'm like, um, okay. He's like, yeah. Give me the thumbs up. And he runs off. I'm like, all right. So I just pile drive it into my mouth. And I can, t I can taste the the cannabis. Like it's 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 it's, it's like it doesn't taste like I icing or cake. It tastes like cannabis. So I'm like, uh oh. I'm like, oh, okay, we we got this. <clears throat> it's cool. We're cool. We're cool. We're all good. We got this. And it starts to creep and creep and creep, and it's coming. I'm like, oh, oh I don't feel good. Oh my god. And I pass out. I don't wake up until five hours later, and it's like three o'clock in the morning. I'm still in my day clothes. I'm right. face down on my floor. The room is spinning like I just had like 16 shots of tequila. Like I'm so dizzy I can't even see straight. I'm trying to get my phone so I can call him and scream at him. I'm going. I'm trying to dial his number. I'm going. You fucking ass. Jerk, you <laughs> son of a bitch! I'm, I'm got a good to story about this after, after we finish. <laughs> and I'm, I'm, the room is spinning, and I, I, I had to go to the toilet and like puke, like probably like 20 times. Like a, after a while, I was just dry heaving stomach acid, like there was nothing left. But I, I was totally OD'd. I was totally sick. It fucked me up so hard. I'm like trying, dude. I never ate it after that ever again. Never. I worked with a guy. He loved it. You did. Well, I mean, if you get the right ratio, which is hard to do, it, he definitely it, it seemed like he he had people, you know, who that's what they did, <coughs> make candies and shit like right, that. Right, right, right. Well, if you know what you're doing, you can get the right ratio, and but getting the right ratio is hard unless you're dealing with like pure. I mean, and there's there's the whole terps, there's the whole dab scene, which is he like does I know shit too. He loves it. Right, terps, bad terps. I, I know people Never who make that. that. They blast it with the uh, the pro, uh, propane, not propane, but uh, propane and propane uh, accessories. But butane. You pile. I've done that it's kind of okay. It's it's all right. I mean, I've I've done it. You get way too fucking stoned. He says I mean, it's, it's very efficient. Yeah. 
It's, it's, efficient, it's efficient, but it's, it's like basically, it's basically too hard. It's, it's basically freebasing pot. That's what it remember, is. It's pot crack. Remember when we were talking about how, you know, maybe there would be a way to hack into an enemy's tank at some point? Maybe. This was earlier this month. What is this? Army electronic warfare technology causes tank. What? You remember talking about that, McKelvey? Not specifically. I'm gonna read this now. Well, anything that's digital can be hacked. Oh yeah, yeah. easily. So even if I it's mean, not connected to the fucking, if it has a wireless connection, like a wireless antenna, an RF right. signal, that's all it is, and you can still hack it. I can understand like the jamming the comms and stuff, but it can still drive and move. If it's a computerized tank, they can essentially yeah, you can take just, like shut the engine over. down and shit like that. You know, kill critical systems. Right, that's like most cars Fry are digitalized. Wired. They're they're all the, the the accelerator is is digital. The the if gas. It, if it's prone to an EMP attack, it's it can be hacked. Right. Which I, is I'm why I'm sitting here thinking like shit. All we need to do is just oh. disable the fuel pump <laughs> or some shit <laughs> like that. You know. Uh -huh. Fuck with the hydraulics of the turret so it can't turn no, it. I, I would fucking rearrange your GPS coordinates so they're fucking coming to you in an ambush. It'd be easier. <laughs> Well, that's yeah, why ransomware good, is... And they just swing around and blow you to pieces. <laughs> they might be German. That's why if ransomware there, is fucking up. people up right now, because just to save a few bucks, you know, American infrastructure was all put on the internet, so surprise, surprise, CIA-grade, you know, hacking equipment is now ransomwareing people, and it's fucking everybody up. Russia doesn't have... All the Russians. They didn't fuck... <laughs> Whatever. The, the what do you mean? It's the, it's definitely the Russians. You gotta, you gotta weigh out the risk versus reward. I mean, the Russians don't for, have this problem big because they shit, you gotta take big risk. Well, no. I mean, you don't digitalize your entire hospital database of private information so that a hacker can Are take it all. Are we doing bigger, better shit in Russia? And you definitely don't put it on one network. You gotta pay the price. Right, right, I mean, right. What is it? Pay the cost to be the boss? I mean, you put yourself at an incredible well, risk, but it's to achieve no, kind it's of to bigger save, and better. It's to save money. It's not to be better. I mean, you can and with be more better money, with more people get paid, and they make bigger and better shit. No, it's cheaping out. It's making the, the, the end result weaker to save money for yourself. It's, so your product is actually shit, but you're, you're paying yourself more. So Does it you're, work? <laughs> digitalizing. Half-assedly. Half-assedly, right. But putting your information in, in a medium that can be compromised isn't being a boss. It's being a fucking douchebag. So then that, that's I'm why I'm not really trying to – I would agree with you in that well, you're, respect. Well, you're, you're counter-signaling to a point. But nonetheless, by, by being able to do that, you can, say, store more information, serve more people, uh, that sort of thing. Like, it's, it's, you have to make certain concessions – to do that shit. That's the difference. They, uh, other people might not be doing it, but they're not doing it at, say, on the scale that we're doing it. You know? Uh, the problem uh, it's is... It's not maintainable doing well, it. Well, I don't, I don't like see... That. I don't see it being a, a positive improvement to the system. I, I see it as a downgrade. See, the problem is... You're like, thinking of it too it, singular-like. It, it takes away fucking human workers. I'm serious. Like, look at Sheets or Wawa. You guys know what those are? Yep. Yeah, but... People need their records, right, so they can get some proper medical care. Right. What if there was physically no space to fucking store people's records? Then what's going to happen? Yeah. How can you get proper care? Well, your well, files, don't put it on your the records, internet. Uh, via HIPAA, your records are supposed to be erased every no, five no. years. No, no. See, once again, you're thinking singular. It's like every seven like, years. It's yeah. digital. We're able to say instead of store 100,000, say 100 trillion. Right, right. You thing, can make it able digital. To do Who the fuck don't? More people. But don't not necessarily argue that it's going to give them a better quality of care. I guess I will use healthcare, I guess, as an example. Yeah, true. Um, it's not going to give you necessarily a better quality of care, but you are going to get more people a better quality of care than they're getting, you know, and that sort of thing. Uh, or even just say just the potential, that sort of thing. Is okay. Well, what, 
I'm well, dig that. digitalizing isn't bad in itself, but don't put the digital database in a in a position where it can be accessed by the internet, because then it will be hacked. So there's nothing You're wrong with digital. You're talking about like how some hospitals will release digital records and shit. Well, no, see, just, this is... he's talking about physically like storing them and that sort of thing, and the way, well, the way that we use it. And well, I'm, I would no, say I'm the reason that they do that because that it allows you, <laughs> right, so, more well, no, efficiently or cheaply. I'm talking about as you're how ransomware and programs like WannaCry and and Petya, and if you if you if you're you know keeping up with what's going on right now in 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 the cyber hacking world, is is that you know CIA grade. Software is being used to ransomware people, which is – what ransomware is, is that you steal a whole bunch of people's information. You put it behind a paywall, that, and you're, you're putting this incredibly sensitive, important, sometimes top-secret information behind a paywall. And you say, if you want your information back, you have to pay me a million dollars. And hackers are doing this right now all the time to American uh, – Corporations yeah. like I, hospitals. I kind of go happen. to argue to say that that shit is going to happen no matter what the medium is. We uh, just had this happen in since the beginning of time, you know. In, our in Europe, right? In, in my private practice, we literally just had this happen. They held our fucking QuickBooks ransom. We hold our QuickBooks on a remote server away from the office. It holds all the practice information, like taxes, payroll, so on and so forth. They actually sent out a fucking, uh, a fucking what was it, two Bitcoin? They wanted. They held us shit ransom. They they could they completely copied our shit, saved it, and deleted what was left, and they held it for us. People are gonna do that type stuff no matter what, though. You think it's gonna lead to a nuclear option at some point where they're gonna try to more or less control the internet? Oh, it's already a thing. Well, <coughs> Obama already let uh, certain entities control. I mean, it was a free. Here we it go. It wasn't. No, shut the fuck up, Cardinal. He, he really. He, he actually did this. The internet wasn't owned and operated by any specific one NGO or any other business. Now he signed a bill that allowed non-American companies and governments to be able to say what, who, and where and gets posted on the internet. So now it's becoming a more controlled. That happens though. And well, no, the internet used to be until like. Used, Three years ago, right? No, but the people right, very who, like on the lines that cross like the ocean and that sort of shit. I mean, places like North Korea, they they do that already. You know, we shit, we do it in our country probably. Um, people who like you know, cut, yeah, every time like you know, you cross like borders and the people, like I say, the people who own all like the backbone basically of the internet, like that to me, that's who owns the internet. Like say the people who have like the line that crosses the Atlantic to the next continent. You know, they really you're at their will. Well, no, this is about Saudi Arabia let it, saying what can and cannot be posted on an American internet. That's what I'm saying. Are you talking yeah. about like the, the board of people who quote unquote run the internet? It's not necessarily well, a board, it's just a singular entity from each right. country. It was, I forgot the acronym for it. It's like NI, NICAD or something like that. Or, something or like that, yeah. It's, it's a corporation for internet names and addresses. That was not owned or being – it wasn't able to be manipulated by anybody because it was just a free agency. So now influences from other com companies and corporations and countries are now being able to, to project their influence on what gets posted on the internet and why before that never happened. And that was up until recently. So, I just say it sounds like it's official now, but I absolutely believe it happened before. You know, that's just how people are. Well, you know, that's not it a good seems thing. like it's official. I think the argument for it happening was that it was already happening. That's they what wanted, I was. Well, they wanted to me. I think they just put a different name on it and made it official. Well, of course. Like. I mean, it was the last bastion of free speech, and that's of course why they wanted to clamp down on it because that was the only way people could communicate without there being some kind of filter. And now that they've gotten their claws into it and being able to censor people, which is happening on YouTube, I mean, people are being uh, uh, demonetized all the time. 
I mean, YouTube channels used to make their money on advertisement, but now people are being demonetized through advertisement revenue because they're not towing the line to the establishment's narrative. So if you, if you talk about a subject on YouTube that isn't towing the line of the establishment, you get demonetized. So that, that is a, you know, a, 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 a violation of freedom of speech. It's draconian and it's authoritarian. So th this is this is the breakdown works. and the deconstruction sucks, but that is kind of how shit works. I mean, but that's what he's getting at is that was not the intent for the internet. Right? Why why are you counter signaling me on the the negative re implications of clamping down on free I, speech? I, think we, I actually was just sitting here thinking, me and you just we look at it basically 180 from each other. Well, you, uh, you seem you seem to think that it's an inevitability, and we should all just go along with it. I I'm say not saying it's that, something that you should stand up for, to against. I just like, think that's it's not gonna. I think those types of things are gonna occur regardless. Um, well, you can fight people, it one way, and all they're gonna do is morph and change and do the other way. It's more of how people interact with each other. Everybody's always trying to control. You know, you have people who want to control folks, right, and that sort right. of thing. They're gonna find a mechanism, basically. Right. Um, well, is the way I see it. I we, focus more on just maneuvering and getting the best for myself. I guess we just have two different ways to approach it. It's going to always evolve, like McKelvey's saying, but on the other end, it's going to evolve as well because what comes after the internet essentially will be that new medium of free speech as well. Yeah. I mean, we, we fucking, we're going to duck and dive and make it happen and you play your part and you do your thing. But like I say, I don't, I actually agree with most of the shit you're saying. I think we just, the perspective we have different perspective when we look at okay it. okay no i get that you i get know? it I get yeah it. I, get I don't it. I get i'm it. not saying that the things that you're saying are false by any means uh, i think they all are true actually but uh i just think even if you fight it and defeat that the problems is gonna they're gonna do it a different way uh, more well it's like trying to chop the heads off a of hydra yeah but it'll just grow back and <sighs> then you just um, find another way to cut that bitch off right but um <laughs> Yeah, in the end, they'll keep taking and taking and taking and taking. Right. Well, Honestly, that's what living is, back. I think. You know, that's what makes it interesting. Uh, if everything were, like, all the same or, like, perfect or whatever, I think it would kind of suck. Like, I don't know. I, I enjoy well, of course, the, life's the about diversity struggle. and the different things to do. Uh, of course, life's about struggle and Let's about hardship. Think about this about conversation. Pain. We've been all over the place, right? At least, what, four or five different big subjects? And that's like life, you know. If everything were the same, it'd just be one thing that we got to do. You no, know? true, 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 true. Yeah, yeah. Um, but if you le if you let them get too far ahead of you, then freedom will never be a thing again. Mm, yep. I mean, there there will be a point in time where the window will close and there's it'll a, be too late for everybody. There's a point like at which laws that's what will I'm become saying. so ridiculous right. that walking a certain way will be wrong. Right, we're we're already in the realm of thought. Are policing. you an American? Because we don't play that shit. Me? You can make the laws. Fuck if I'm following them, and that's no, sort of Canadian. Thing, you know, the people will revolt, <laughs> man. You have to be willing to go there, kind of thing. People will let shit go a lot further than than well, uh, you think. Yeah, people have been anesthetized. They, they they've been lulled to sleep long enough to let. Things that shouldn't be allowed. You, those pharmaceuticals you, you ever watch? Uh, <laughs> you ever watch The Handmaid's Tale? I don't think so. That's a good show. I've been watching it. It's kind of got a lot of sex in it, but <laughs> everything does these days. It's like these Christian fundamentalists take over, and the way they do it is they seize everybody's bank assets, take away money from women, shit like that, right? And what can you do without money, essentially? I guess if you run out, then you need to go take some. Yep. Well, that's they did the take you all the money. You never live without money. That's for damn sure. No, but if you take it from me, then I need to take it from somewhere else, or you just have you have to adapt and be able to survive and move through. Mm -hmm. I don't well, know. when you have a a foreign banking entity that dictates your money for you, that oh, that's God, that's not getting the banking. That's Holy a problem. Shit. Well, uh, you Rothschilds, Rockefeller. Of course. I'm like uh, falling asleep. Where am I? Hello? I have all the shit that he's talking about, like the manipulating and stuff, those are the original motherfuckers who really balled it out, I say, in the modern times. Like that circle mm -hmm. of people, Rock Are we still in a podcast? Era? Or are we just 
I've been recording for the past 55 minutes, so. <laughs> oh my god. Hey, spoiler alert. It's the Jews. Hey, this is going to get demonetized, by the way, Spectre. <laughs> Why? It's definitely going to get yeah, demonetized. Because we mentioned the Jews. Exactly. Well, we've mentioned anything that's factual. I mean, Good you can't boy, have a shill. Right. I want to post this as educational now. You can't be monetized you on go. YouTube unless you're playing video games or, t or posting videos about kittens. I mean, even PewDiePie has been demonetized. I mean, all my shit's monetized, except for the last two videos, because they so contained you, music. All videos or just this video? All my videos are monetized. No, I'm except saying, well, I'm talking about, like, when you're demonetized, is it on a single case N basis? It's on, it's video by video basis. Yeah. Well, I so, mean, say that sucks. But so if you if you take your this is the way I see it. see that particular thing. The thing is, two things wait, actually. More of an audit basis, Number one, so if they, they didn't if actually they de stop you from like doing what you wanted to do. All they did was stop you was from getting money from it. Uh, they didn't deny your access to uh, continue to get some money on their platform, but they did basically tax you for the ability to do said activity. Oh. Is the way I see it. Well, the thing so is punishing you for not saying the right things. Also, just I mean, yeah, for me. Say the right things, they'll give you some money. So, like, you still got the opportunity there. That's the way I see it. It's twofold. Like, okay, well, if you, you want to be a want, shill for the establishment and say a bunch they're... of, like, propaganda, then if you want to be a propaganda shill, then yeah, go ahead, yeah. sign up. YouTube is coercing you to go a certain direction with your videos. Right. Right. I guess I'm just going to go the direction I'm going to go. If you give me money, cool. If not, uh, I guess I got to get my money somewhere else, but I'm gonna right. still use this platform to do what the fuck I'd want to do. If you, know? you if you step over the line and you say something or you think something that, that that is wrong according to their rules, they take away your money. And That's all they do, though. They tax you, though. They aren't. They're well, not stopping your ability to say what you want to say and get what you need that... to get your agenda done. Okay, well, isn't that a little bit draconian, don't you think? Isn't that a yeah. So I've made 80 cents so far, in case anybody no, was wondering. That for a and say YouTube is a privately owned organization. Well, arguably. I also don't have faith that there are going to be people okay, that well, want what to about let you do it in the way that you want to do it, you know? Like, I, I just well, don't have faith in how people does to be that good. Freedom of speech not being violated doing that. I mean, something that's supposed to be if public. If I don't want someone to come in my house, or you no, know, if I'm letting someone in my house, but I don't want them to say cuss words, is that violating their freedom of speech? I say your freedom of speech isn't being violated merely because they are not stopping you from saying what the fuck you want to say. Uh, they merely are stopping you from making money on their platform to do it. Well, yeah. still people, able to get your message channels, out there. People's I, channels okay. have been shut down entirely before, and that's well, when you I mean, really cross the line. And they they have they have I've known channels that have been Once completely again, I just, I don't have destroyed. Faith that people are gonna do this shit and uphold the values basically that you're describing. I I'm gonna step I'm gonna step in here like as that. a as a little advocate for capitalism. It is not a public platform. That's what I'm saying. YouTube is a private establishment. Yeah, they make their rules. If you wanna make your own platform for it, great. But you're you're stepping in in someone no, else's house what and I trying meant, to say what shit. I meant was it's open to the public. Of course, it's it's run by Google, and Google are all Zog run fucking. It, it, of course, Google is a, is a analogy. Completely, if I, I think they just hit on some. If you don't like it, then maybe you should start your own YouTube -like analogy thing. here. If I go into a bakery and order a cake with a swastika on it, does that baker have to make that cake? Even though he doesn't want to. No, he doesn't have to. No, it's okay. You can use the original analogy of the gay wedding cake. It's all right. Well, yeah, it was a gay one. But... Right, and and the and the courts that are actually ruling in the favor of the bakery, saying that no, they shouldn't have to make that cake. Right, yeah. and I agree with the court. I agree with I I agree with that too. Um, I'm just I'm just bringing into the spotlight the fact that we have major major amount of money and effort going in to censor people that speak a certain proclivity of an idea to try to just like destroy them, destroy their career, take away their money, not allow them a platform to even say or think what they want to say in favor of another one. So that to me is kind of fucked up. Fundamentally, I think I disagree with how you think YouTube is the platform 
it's once again as they were saying it's their private thing youtube um, is a platform it's not you know, yeah the it's only not the platform. only and i'll be honest i don't think they're censoring they're just not paying if you're not saying shit that they're that cool is a with. type of censor that is a type of censorship yes not but really. it's a private censorship you're, if i hire you to are you saying work what you want to say stand and, and you sit hear? there and go i'm not i'm not serving you burgers i'm just going to serve you like vegetarian shit instead because it's you know that's not that's not okay, exactly well, what well, i hired you about, to do how about youtube employees deleting people's po uh uh comments on youtube posts you sign up to agree to allow them to do that shit if you don't agree with that then don't sign up yeah and it's, use in, YouTube it's in terms of service against the is the the corner i stand in you know yeah, um, okay so those terms it's pretty much they're definitely go somewhere they're else. other services um and like i say do it yourself uh is as how i would say do things you know now i think youtube is since it's a private exam or private organization it's a tough example to argue freedom of speech if it was a public organization then it would be different uh, yeah i would i would have a different opinion although i would expect similar results nonetheless I'm just trying to figure out when I need to end this thing. <laughs> I think it's well past that point. <laughs> Any closing remarks? You can, you Anyone? Can go, you can go ahead and stick a fork in it. Anybody have any closing remarks? Uh, Corman lives in Canada. Yeah. Uh, and don't do drugs, kids. Dick. No. Oh shit. No. Did they hurt you last night? What? These nuts. <laughs> <You got 'em. laughs> That's it.